morning everyone and welcome back to my channel so I'm doing another what I eat in a day today as you know I work full-time so a lot of these videos do involve meal prep so we're gonna be doing some flashbacks where I show you all of the meal prep that I did yesterday night so we're actually midweek it's Wednesday today so everything that I'll be doing will be really easy but then we'll be moving towards a bit more of an elaborate supper because we are entertaining tonight and it's fairly rare for me to entertain during the week but I want to show you how to make a pretty easy meal that's still just very fall-esque very warm very inviting so I'll be sharing with you a breakfast lunch and dinner recipe as well as a salad to go with that dinner and then my friend is bringing over desserts so to some extent we have some surprises coming our way because I'm not even sure what she's bringing but anyway to start at the beginning it is now breakfast time I am enjoying my coffee I've got my chia pudding already made, so let's have a quick flashback and I'll show you the steps that I took yesterday night to prep this. Super easy, it takes just a few minutes, and as long as you remember to do it the night before, then the next morning when you wake up, you just have a breakfast that you can assemble and you don't have to make. So whereas in my last what I eat in a day, I did a full kind of egg hot breakfast, um, in today's um, video we're just going to be keeping it quick and easy because... I know I'll be doing quite a bit of cooking later on. And my lunch is already made as well, so I'm actually gonna take that out of the fridge now. First of all, let's crack open this chia pudding and I'll show you how I garnish it. But to make it the night before, here are the easy steps. All you need is a large Tupperware, then of course you need some chia seeds and a liquid of your choice, as well as some items to flavor it. For this meal prep breakfast, I'm going to be doing a chocolate chia seed pudding with a little bit of a fall kick to it. So first of all, you wanna measure out your milk. You can use any milk you like, including almond milk, if that's your preference. I'm going to use two cups of it so that there's enough for two servings for two people, so two days. Um, so so I pour that out into my big Tupperware which has to have enough room in it so that you can mix it without splashing everywhere. And then I measure out one heaping tablespoon of good quality cocoa powder. And you definitely want to use a whisk for this chocolate chia seed pudding because the cocoa can take a little while to incorporate, whereas for other recipes you probably just need a spoon. So mix in all your ingredients. First of all, your tablespoon of cocoa powder, a good shake of pumpkin pie spice if you like it. I think it adds a nice warmth to the chocolatey taste of it. And then about two tablespoons of a sweetener of your choice. Honey would work. I really like maple syrup. It's easily available where I live and I like the taste that it gives it. Then I like to add a little dash of vanilla extract, but really just the smallest amount. You don't want it to be overpowering. And then measure and add a generous quarter cup of chia seeds. I get mine from Costco. They tend to be really expensive from more upscale grocery stores, but Costco has these big bags that are pretty affordable. So that's really when I started making this breakfast fairly consistently. And I'd say we have this about a third of the time. And then the rest of the time, we usually have eggs or some fruit and yogurt or something like that. Stir it up and you can see this is how I like mine. So it's got a bit of a pudding-like texture. It's not too thick, it's not too runny. The addition of the cocoa and the maple syrup makes it so delicious. And Joe really likes this breakfast too, actually. It's sort of a little bit desserty, but it's also really, really filling because the chia seeds actually contain protein, amino acids, they're really good. You get really fancy with this. I just like to do some fresh berries. These are kind of the last raspberries and blueberries of the season. And I love to have berries for as long as I can. So these are quite giant raspberries that I got from a far farm stand. All right, so let's get the raspberries and then I'm just gonna sprinkle some blueberries. I might add a few nuts as well, just to add a little bit of extra crunch to it, like this, like this, there we go, and then the remaining, plus a little bit, is going to go in a little trail mix bag for me. 
So if you're wondering what I have as a snack, given that the soup may not keep me full all afternoon until I can get home from work, I'm gonna have a little bit of nuts. So this is a mixture of the pecans and pistachios. And I'm going to have this blueberry muffin, which is the Food Wishes recipe, funnily enough. Can you see it's got a penguin on the bottom and it's got a lot of blueberries in it. Um, so I've got a little baking treat to have with a coffee later on. It's something I have to say that I tend to do mostly in the fall season to have baking at work. It's a little bit of an indulgence, but I have to say if you're having a long afternoon, a cup of coffee and a nice muffin or a slice of banana bread or pumpkin bread or something like that will get you right through the afternoon. So I will link this recipe as well as the recipes for every single other food that I mention in this video in the info bar below. So make sure you check it out. Start taking to the dry cleaner. Where's your coffee? Right. I hadn't made it because you were filming. Mm -hmm. I can't be without coffee. It's pretty loud. <laughs> it's good coffee though. I'll link our coffee machine down below. I got so many questions on it in the last video and I tried to answer as many of them as I could. Um, I'm pretty sure it's still available. It's an espresso by DeLonghi. And I have to say it's made me into an espresso convert where I was very much a skeptic beforehand. So look at the beautiful breakfast I made you. Isn't it pretty? Look at those colors. It's like 4th of July in a bowl. Yeah. Right? Mm. I think I have already told you what flavor this is, right? Chia flavor. It's very good. Chia seeds do not have a flavor, guys, in case you're worried. They're actually really bland, and it's really just about the texture and their ability to absorb liquid, and so you can pretty much do any flavor, like anything that can flavor a liquid. You could do pumpkin spice by itself. You could do like, a, like more of a fruit smoothie. I've even added yogurt before to the base. It's very, very versatile. And very tasty as well. Mm -hmm. I thought in this video I'd actually show you how I pack my lunch. So I just take a little reusable bag. This one's from Ken and Ace. Add the soup. And then I add the snacks on top so they don't get squashed. This one actually has a little snap closure, which is great. A little perk of shopping too much at Ken and Ace. And then I put everything in my Longchamp tote. At the bottom I've also got a pair of pants that I've been meaning to bring to dry cleaning. Because unfortunately they're not the kind that I can and wash myself, we're ready to go. So for lunch, I had some meal prepped butternut squash and carrot soup. I really improved this recipe over the years. It's now got a nice balance to it. It's not as sweet as it used to be, and it has some roasted carrots in it, which really helped to balance out the flavor of the butternut squash. It's just very fall inspired and delicious. So for the meal prep the night before, I got a little bit of help from Joe to cut all these squashes open. They tend to be a little bit difficult, and we tend to have a bit of a ball meal prepping. We usually do this after we've had dinner especially if it's a weeknight so Joe made me a little house out of the chopped up squashes or actually he said it was a pie sign but I don't know about you guys but I don't really see it it looks like a house to me um, so that's actually also a spaghetti squash and then this a giant carrot which I got from an Asian supermarket there's something extra delicious about them they have a lot of sweetness and just really delicious they roast up really really well so I've got my spaghetti squash my butternut squash and my giant carrot going in at 450 degrees for 40 minutes. I'm also thawing about a cup of pre-made um, chicken broth that I had. You could definitely use just a little stock cube or something like that would work absolutely fine. Um, that's what I do when I don't have it on hand, but I do like to have some stock in the freezer when I can. So then I've got a red onion. I'm just going to chop that up. Any kind of onion, onion would do. It also tastes really great and a little bit more subtle with shallots. And to that, I add some olive oil and some dried herbs and I just fry that up along with a little bit of cayenne and salt and pepper just to wake up the flavors if you're using dried herbs or spices it's a really good idea to do that and so I just do that until the onions become kind of translucent it takes a couple of minutes and once that's done then I go ahead and add my roasted vegetables so you can see I'm only actually using half of the butternut squash 
I reserve the stem part because I think it's a little bit less fibrous and I'll be using that in the salad that I'll be serving at my dinner party. And then the other half I just scoop out. It's got a really nice softness to it so it's really easy to deal with as opposed to raw butternut squash. So I just saute everything all together and add my chicken broth. And then I just kind of let it simmer and all kind of melt together, not for very long at all. 10 to 15 minutes is plenty because everything is already soft. You're just letting it get a little bit softer. But you want to make sure that the liquids go up to the top of the vegetables. So if you need a little bit of water to top that up after your cup of broth has been added, then go ahead and do that. And I just went ahead and pulled apart my spaghetti squash and made up this extra little bonus meal prep lunch for Joe with some leftover bolognese sauce. It's one of his favorite things to eat. It's not my favorite. Um, so I'll be having the soup and he'll be having that. Um, so then I just go ahead and use the immersion blender for the soup. You could use a Vitamix, really anything. If you're pouring it into a blender, I would make sure to try and cool it a little bit more. And then I add cream and I add very little, a quarter of a cup or less. And a little cube of cream cheese as well really helps to add a little bit of tanginess and lift that flavor. I top it with a little bit of pecans for some crunch and my lunch for the next day is ready to go. It's really actually quite filling. But nonetheless, I had my snack of my blueberry muffin and Earl Grey tea around 3 p.m to get a nice little last push of energy out at work. I allowed myself an hour and a half before everyone gets here. I still need to clean up and set the table. I'm in the process of making some fresh pasta, which is going to be so delicious. I'm very excited for that. It's been a little while since I've had some. And then you can see I've got an enormous pile of mushrooms here to chop up, as well as some sliced pancetta. I've got some lemon and I'm gonna use some of the zest from this as well. You'll also need some garlic, some cream, and some white wine for the sauce. Now I just need to finish off with my Philips pasta maker, which you can hear in the background. Very, very excited for that. It always makes me so happy to see the pasta come out. It's just like the best part. And then you'll have to excuse my Mickey Mouse apron. I am wearing my new halogen sweater from Nordstrom. I was really excited to wear it. It feels like the perfect sunny fall day to do that, but I didn't want to get all over it so of course I am in chef Mickey mode so I get a lot of questions about my Philips pasta maker do I still use it and love it and the answer is yes I'd say I use it once a week at least and my pasta buying has gone down by more than 50% because I just prefer the taste of it so much so while that's making it just kind of does its own thing all you have to remember to do is chop it so that you don't end up with super long strands. I'm frying up my pancetta with some fresh sage which gets so crispy and delicious. Sometimes it's just the little tiny touches like that that really elevate a dinner from just a weeknight meal to an entertaining worthy meal. So everybody really really enjoyed that. What I do is I just scoop it out once it's got a nice crispiness to it and then I add my enormous amount of mushrooms and just let them reduce and lose their water with a little sprinkle of salt it really helps make sure not to burn them but you do want them to go nice and golden while that's happening I'm just gonna mix up my dressing for my salad which is just grainy mustard some balsamic vinegar and a good quality extra virgin olive oil and I crumble in the goat cheese along with my chopped up butternut squash from the night before and I like to serve it quite chilled and to the sauce, once the mushrooms have simmered with some cream, I just add the juice of one lemon and the zest of about half of a lemon, which really makes it pop. And I've marinated some red onions just in some water and salt. We are at final assembly. We have 12 minutes to go before their theoretical arrival at least. Um, so let me just show you everything and where I like to leave things standing when I'm entertaining. So the cream sauce is just staying warm there. The heat of the freshly cooked pasta will do any warming that's necessary, but just by having the lid on, it'll stay pretty warm. I've got my fresh pasta here. I have a cup to remind me to reserve some of the pasta water. I've got some truffle oil, the previous bottle, and the new bottle. 
And then over here, I'm just gonna still do a little bit of cleanup, but I've got the salad with all the layers ready to be tossed, and I've got my crispy pancetta and sage ready to top the pasta dish, which I'm gonna serve family style in this bowl that I painted several years ago, and I've got a chunk of parmesan here ready to grate on top. Over there, Joe is paying attention to Fufu. The table is set, the candle is lit which pretty much means that the last thing I have to do is pour myself a glass of wine. I am, Look at yeah. Start. Not long ago, it's been less than a month. I find out so many things from your your Instagram. <laughs> so, like, I love my Instagram. Like, so do you. Make them from scratch? Hmm? From scratch? Look at it. Like, the scarves? Do you knit them? Or? No, oh my gosh. Um, so I'm working with a supplier in Nepal. Do you just order them? Or yeah, they're, they're made to my specifications. I'm the designer. Oh, okay. And, and then you, the and big you boxes arrive. Oh, and they say Nouvelle Apparel. Yeah, Nouvelle Apparel. Cool. I know. Cool. Yeah. Cashmere and silk. This yeah. is one month in? Yeah. Exciting. I know, yeah. And it's now one year into my jewelry business, which is so crazy. Because I always associate it with your bachelorette brunch. Right. <laughs> I know. Oops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I'm so impressed. <laughs> They're pretty soft, hey? I'm really pleased with how they turned out. Soft. The pasta looks scar. amazing. It looks scar. Anyway, let's get scar. I hope you're hungry. <laughs> that looks fantastic. So good. All right. This is like what I would eat if I could choose my you own meal. You could dream up a meal. <laughs> Like it's so fast. Twelve minutes. Really? Yeah. So you put in the flour, you put in the eggs, you kind of like drizzle in the eggs, you mix it up and drizzle it in, kind of like omelet batter type of thing. And you have to guillotine. Is it good? It's great. Yeah. Yes. Yay! Is success. It, is it passed up? Excellent. Does it have to like my plate? dry after? Or do you right, Chef Ainsley, <laughs> what's what's so in the delicious dessert? It's a layer of chocolate cake mm -hmm. that I made. Mm -hmm. and then chocolate mousse the that I made. Yeah. And then whipped cream. Mm -hmm. I love whipped cream. Again. Very wonderful. You want to say good night with me? Hello. So I've been filming all my food all day and this is the end of it because I don't think I'll be eating anything else after this giant delicious, is it trifle or trifle? It's trifle. Trifle? Trifle. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.